So we go all the way back here. Another thing we talked about was if we go through here and we do a clip curve, uh, this will give us a very nice uh, effect. Let's hold down Control Shift, get rid of B radius. So again, double tap Alt twice to get a very sharp transition. And you'll see we get a very nice sharp result all the way straight through. However, it doesn't give us a very clean cut. So if we go through here and we say, okay, let's try to use trim curve. We can go through here. We can hold down Alt twice or tap Alt twice. And you're gonna see it gives us a, a nice clean slice here, but when it does the fill hole operation, if we hold down Control Shift and isolate this, this is a nice clean slice. But then when it does a close holes, it doesn't really know to go straight across here. Now if we turn on our floor here, uh, you're gonna see this is our we're actually symmetrical across the z-axis, so let's make this a little bit easier. Let's undo and we'll make this z forward and we'll go in from the x-axis, negative and positive. So I'm gonna go through here and we're gonna go ahead and do a trim operation. And if you wanna do it manually, remember, you can hold down Control Shift and do a slice. It's the exact same thing. If you go through here and just Alt Tap twice, you can hold down Control Shift and isolate this one and then Geometry Modify topology, delete hidden, and then geometry modify topology, close holes. That's essentially what trim is doing. So we'll go back to our trim curve here. So one thing we can do, and essentially what I want to do is have a straight line of geometry all the way across here. Uh, one way to do this, we're going to hit W to go out of draw mode, which is Q, and go into the gizmo mode. We haven't talked about gizmo yet, but we'll give you a little sneak preview. So if I control tap on any polygroup, it's going to unmask just this polygroup here. And I'm going to hold down Alt, and we're going to say reset orientation. So that's going to make it so that this X axis goes straight over, uh, straight across this way. I'm going to hold down Control and drag, and that's actually going to pull out an extra polygroup here. And I'm going to go all the way over here to the side. So you're going to see we've made straight across geometry all the way across. Of course, this geometry, not really that useful because we've got a very thin piece of geometry going all the way to the side. But what we can do, and what we're going to try and do is get into this polygroup to go ahead and encompass these polygons and these new ones that we made when we control drag. So you see when I control drag, and we'll get into this later, if I keep control dragging, it's just gonna make more and more edge loops. So we'll control Z back. So I'm gonna control shift drag to unmask my entire object. I'm gonna hold down control shift and tap. Well, let's hit Q to go back into draw mode. Control drag to unmask everything. Control shift, we'll go back to select rectangle. I'm gonna control shift tap this polygroup. I'm going to do Control shift x to expand, which you're going to see down here is Visibility Grow, and then Control shift s is Shrink. So when we do Control shift x that'll go ahead and grab the rest of these polygons. It seemed like it missed a few, so if we Control shift drag you can see, oh, we missed these two. Hold on Control shift and then Alt to grab those. Control shift drag to invert that selection. Control w to Group Mask Clear Mask, and now Control shift tap to bring everything else back. So now we have straight across geometry here, and we already know that we have this object that's Z forward, and we're across the X axis. So if we want, we can do a geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the X, and there you go. Now it's capped off, and the geometry grows straight across. Now you may be thinking, that's a lot of steps just to get a nice clean cut through here, and I would tend to agree. I don't generally do this type of thing. If you want something a little bit easier, and we're gonna skip way ahead, but bear with me, what you can do, and we haven't even talked about subtools yet, but again, I just wanna go ahead and show you this functionality so you know it's available to you. We're gonna say append down here, and this is gonna give us a new subtool. So I'm gonna go down here to cube3d, append a cube. I'm gonna select the cube, hit W, and then we can just move this cube into space. So now this cube will cut through our polysphere here. So we're going to get more into subtools in Gizmo very soon. In fact, we're going to use this to kind of transition into subtools and Gizmo functionality. But like I said before, if we want to cut stairs or zigzags through this object, we can hold down control and drag out a copy. Control, drag out another copy. Let's hit Q to go back into draw mode. Control drag to unmask everything. Let's go over here to this third icon, which is Boolean. And if we go all the way up here to this live Boolean button and turn that on, you're gonna see, actually that's going to do, it's a union 
a subtractive and an intersection Boolean. So if we go over here and we turn off polyframe, you're gonna see this is the result we're getting. Let's go ahead and choose that second icon. This is a subtractive Boolean. If we turn polyframe back on, you see this is the object, and then this is the result of that Boolean. And because uh, it's just a preview, if I turn this off, the geometry comes back. So we can hit W, and now as I move this around, you're gonna see it's gonna update on the fly as to what that result is going to be. So instead of going through here and clipping and moving stuff around, you can literally just use a live Boolean to get this effect. Now we've already talked about Dynamesh, so here's another functionality of Dynamesh that you can use. If we go down here to Geometry, Dynamesh, you're going to see it's not on for this subtool, but let's go ahead and turn it on. Let's turn down Blur and then just hit Dynamesh, and you're going to see if we turn on Polyframe and we go into Solo Mode, we now have a Dynamesh Sphere. So if we go out of solo mode, you can see we still have, and turn off polyframe, we have this live Boolean. If you want, we're skipping ahead again, but subtool, Boolean, you can just hit make Boolean mesh. And then out here, you're going to have a U mesh, and then there's the Boolean result. It just sliced through and gave you this geometry. So a lot of really cool things you can do with this. But let's go back here and talk more about Dynamesh. So we already know we can control drag, and that'll re-Dynamesh our object, and we can sculpt things, but you can also... If you have a subtractive mesh and you have live boolean turned on and you turn on polyframe, you're going to see, okay, this is a result I'm getting because I'm subtracting this mesh out. What you can also do, if you have DynaMesh turned on for this object, let's go ahead and turn live boolean off and we'll turn on polyframe. I'm going to go, this one's selected, but this subtool is right below it. I'm going to say merge down. That's going to merge this subtool with this bottom subtool, and your top subtool is going to retain all of its properties. So since we had Dynamesh already turned on, if we hit OK, and we go back down here to Geometry Dynamesh, you see it's already on, Blur's turned off. So as I merged these into one subtool, it still retained the Dynamesh properties, and you're going to also notice that this inherited a white polygroup. If we go down here to Polygroups, which we've already talked about a little bit, you're going to see there's an option in here called Group as Dynamesh Sub. When you use this button, that's the result you'll get. And we'll get more into this when we get into Insert Mesh Brushes. But essentially now, if we go back up here, and again we have Dynamesh turned on, and we control drag that result, it'll go ahead and use this as a subtractive Dynamesh. So that'll give you that result as well.